So you've decided to try leather craft, but you don't have any leather crafting tools. This is exactly what happened to me six years ago when I started leather working. Instead of going out and blowing a wad of money on new tools which might collect dust in the near future, I decided to use as many of my existing tools as possible. I came up with the idea of using woodworking tools. You heard me right. I use woodworking tools for leather craft. Not only do they save space in my shop and save me money, they also make me a more efficient leather worker. Okay, so uh, you got me. I don't use a handsaw for leather craft, but there are some tools that you'll find in a typical wood shop that I use in my leather working. Welcome to Big Stack Small Workshop. Whether you are brand new to leather crafting or you are a seasoned veteran, this video is for you. Today, I'm going to show you how to use woodworking tools hint, hint, in leather crafting. Now, I'm not saying you're never going to have to purchase any leather crafting tools. But what I am saying is you can make a few small items first to gauge your interest in the craft. If you find that you do like leather working, then you can purchase a few small tools to broaden the amount of things that you can make. So when you have a small shop, you need to ask yourself, what do I want to make? What tools do I have to help me get there? And if I don't have the right tools, how can I use my existing tools to make that particular item? Anytime you start a new craft, your first few pieces are going to be far from your best. You have new processes to understand, new techniques to master, and materials that you may not even be familiar with. All those fancy new tools are going to seem like a waste if you decide this new hobby isn't for you. Normally, when you see someone with a lot of specialty tools, it's because they've been doing the craft for quite a while. They start with just a few tools, make a few items, buy one or two specialty tools, and make a different item. Then eventually they add more tools and projects as they go along. My journey into leather craft was exactly the same way. I used the tools that I'd already had to fix that broken belt. And as I found things to make, I bought a new tool here and there. Now if you're new to leather craft, you're going to want to keep an eye on my channel. I found different ways to do different things um, without spending hundreds or even thousands of dollars and it saved me a lot of money. So this will be a great time to hit that subscribe button. The disc sander is a great tool for smoothing curves when you're woodworking. It's also great for production because you can sand those curves fast and efficiently. Using a disc sander in leather craft is exactly like using it for woodworking. You can smooth curves to flow nice and evenly and fine tune cuts that seem just a bit off. I've avoided buying a belt punch for years because I'm able to use the disc sander to give a nice smooth edge to my belt ends. If I cut them a bit uneven, I can even fine tune each side so the curves match up perfectly. In addition, after gluing two edges and readying them for stitching, I use a disc sander to smooth out and give the piece a nice, even edge. This is great for knife sheaths when you're gluing up multiple pieces of leather together and you want that seamless look. My disc sander wasn't a particularly expensive tool. I got it at Harbor Freight about eight or nine years ago. It was under $100 at the time. I'm not sure if you noticed, but I had to give it a little push start to give it moving. The motor's worn out. I could go out and buy a new one, but it does what I need to do. And as long as I don't mind giving it a little push now and then, I might be able to save myself a few years of having to purchase a new one. The drill press is used to quickly and efficiently drill perpendicular holes in wood or metal. This makes it a great tool to drill out hardware or fasteners that didn't quite set right when you put them in your leather creations. If you watched my belt making video, you saw that I had placed a rivet in backwards. Once I had cut it back and made a dimple on it with my center punch, the drill press made that backwards rivet a thing of the past with no visible effect on the finished product. I sometimes use my drill press to directly drill into leather to make small stitching holes. Because the drill press moves up and down, I can drill small holes quickly and efficiently. 
and if you set your drill press to run at a faster speed, you will burnish these holes as you are drilling them, making them smoother for the needle to pass through. This drill press is a Craftsman from the 1940s. It was passed down from my grandfather to my father to me. If you don't have a drill press, a regular handheld drill will work just fine. Always make sure to use some scrap material on the back of your workpiece so you don't ruin your workbench. I'll get to the next tool here in just a moment, but do me a favor. If you're finding this video really helpful, hit that like button so YouTube can share it with other makers just like you. The lathe is one of my favorite woodworking tools, and it's such a simple design. Basically, it's a motor that's turned on its side, and the wood spins, and you can turn cylindrical objects, just like what we have over here. Well, what is that anyway? I'll get to that in a second. I originally didn't have a slicker, so I was going to turn one on the lathe. But once I got the rectangular block of wood turned into a cylinder, I decided to just cut a few different size grooves in it. I keep this cylinder with my leather working tools, and when I want to burnish an edge, I stick it on the lathe. The nice thing about using the lathe is I can adjust my speed to get the right amount of friction for burnishing my edges. My lathe burnishing tool was another tool you might remember from the belt making video, even though you might have not known what it was at the time. If you've watched a lot of other people's leather craft videos, I'm sure you've seen people take the Harbor Freight Arbor Press and modify it for leather craft use. I use the Arbor Press in my shop just a little bit differently. Other than adding a longer handle and replacing the original plate with a completely flat one, I haven't really modified my Arbor Press. I use the Arbor Press with a few keychain dies to cut out shapes. The longer handle gives me a bit more force for cutting. And when I use the half inch thick steel plate on top, I get fairly even pressure. And slide it out. And you got your piece of leather that you cut. You pop it out. And that's what we're looking at right there. This die is a little bigger, so I press one section and slide it down and press another and keep going until it's completely cut. The white material you see is made from a cheap cutting board I use, so the steel blades on my dies don't dull fast. I also use the Arbor Press to stamp with 3D leather stamps. It gives you an even stamping pressure for a top-notch image in your leather. And uh, we're going to press it in here. Set it on here. And we're going to use what's called a ram mount. So you could put a tool in there, but what it does is each one of these four things gives equal pressure on the back of your stamp. Is how you get your keychains. I know what you're thinking and you're right. The Arbor Press isn't a woodworking tool, but it isn't designed for leather work either. It's primarily used by mechanics and machinists for the pressing of bearings and bearing races. Now when you have a small shop, it's not about buying as many toys and tools as you can. It's about getting creative and making the most of the tools that you do have. I really hope this video has inspired you to make something. Go out and get started today. Because with a little imagination and creativity, you can make pretty much anything you want to in your small shop. If you found ways to use your existing tools in leather craft or any new hobby, I'd love to hear about it. Do me a favor, pause the video, and drop a note in the comments below. Remember, Big Stacks grows, Big Stacks builds, 
and Big Stacks makes. If you're curious about the absolute worst snaps I've ever used, go ahead and click on this video up here. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time at Big Stacks Small Workshop. One last thing. I want to give a shout out to one of the Big Stacks family of makers. That would be Sister Wildchild, who got me this really awesome shirt. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.